We made it again. We're here. Hi, I am Emily Thompson. I am the founder of Almanac Supply Co. I'm Mary. I'm the business manager of Almanac Supply Co. And I'm David. Uh, Just David. Yep. <laughs> Just David. <laughs> Wonderful. And we are here for our tea time with Almanac to hang out for 30 minutes until our crystal party starts at 3 p.m. Eastern. I'm very excited about the crystal party today because mm-hmm. it's witchy vibes. That's a pretty table over there. It really is. Right? Yeah. Putting this table together was a ton of fun. There's actually more conversation, I feel like, that went into choosing this week's party than we usually do because... Um, we wanted, because Halloween's coming, basically. Mm-hmm. Next weekend is Halloween. We wanted to make sure we had, like, appropriately themed crystal parties because it's basically the best time of year. And we wanted to make sure that we had a good one for today so that whenever it comes to shipping them to everyone, mm-hmm. you get, like, some good Halloween goodies. Yeah. Because everyone's wanting witch vibes. Right, David, are you going as a witch for Halloween this year? <laughs> Probably not. No? No. No, you don't think so? I really like my Woody outfit. I was going to say, do you outgrow your outfit? No. True that. True that. Yeah, David does have a pretty epic Woody from Toy Story outfit. <laughs> you can totally do that. For yeah. sure. For sure. Um, okay, so because we are doing Witchy Vibes, and I see a couple of people have joined us live. Hello. Welcome. So glad you're here. Happy Friday. Um, I want to talk about <laughs> Witchy Vibes. A bit because as I was picking this party, I was so excited about it. Um, because I really just got to go through and pick some of my favorite things. Because I, it, this is not a new realization by any means, but I feel like my overall vibe is just kind of witchy vibes, not like too in your face, or is it? This is like, as an insider, I'm like, obviously, guys. But I also feel like maybe from an outsider, maybe not. It's subdued, I think. Just a little. (laughs) Subdued witchy vibes. Perfect. Sneaky witchy vibes. I don't know. I don't know what to call it. Right? I always said that if and when Almanac is ever a brick and mortar store, I um, I want people who like know witchy vibes to walk in and like totally get it. But anyone who's a little less aware can mm-hmm. walk in and, like, just think it's a cool rock shop. Yeah. Basically. Exactly. So, we got to go through and pick out some um, some really cool things for the party today. And um, this actually even gave us the, the ability to bring in some objects that we haven't been able to bring in. More along the lines of, like, um, I guess, like, housewares? Mm-hmm. If you want to call yeah. it that. Yeah. Right? Which sort of brings us into, hope oh Linda Austin says, "I am here, but don't let me buy anything." <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not gonna promise you that one, <laughs> right? If you say sold, it's, it's yours. yours. Also, <laughs> hi, <laughs> right? It is yours. Um, so I do want to talk about just sort of witchy vibes and how we sort of define that these days. Um, maybe I don't know, David. Seemed to have a couple stories he wanted to tell. I don't know <laughs> what you meant by that. But with G vibes, one of the cool things about and sort of tying back to what I said a moment ago about sort of my vision for Almanac always um, was this idea that uh, there are witchy vibes. I don't think it's actually witchy vibes. For us, like it's just nature vibes, right? It's like it's connecting you with the earth and with nature and the cycles of the seasons and those sorts of things. And, you know, a hundred years ago, that was called life. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) These days, that's called witchy vibes, right? And so I think there is this interesting disconnect that has happened with, um, especially the information age and the fact that we've disconnected ourselves so much from nature that now, like, just natural things are... Thank you. Are kind of witchy. I need a tea to talk about this. I realized, I was like, wait, it's tea time. What are we missing? Tea time. Mm -hmm. So... I want to talk about that a little bit. What did what did you have in mind for this, David? Well, one of the things I think is just as like the old vibe or like being in touch with like nature and the changing of seasons and how a lot of like kids I feel like aren't exposed to that sort of stuff 
now as much as even we were from like our parents mm -hmm. and like I've noticed like with Lily like as the you know figuring out when it gets darker sooner and stuff like that like small stuff like that that I feel like kids should know but not all of them like really comprehend right that, like in tune with nature and like how the seasons change and for sure. And yes to this. An example of this is recently we were explaining to our daughter how the moon works, basically. Because she was like, she was shocked that the moon was coming up. Like in the middle of the day. Like there was something along the lines of like the moon wasn't where she thought it should be. And we were explaining to her how, you know, the rising time of the moon is different depending on the phase of the moon. And like... It blew her mind. <laughs> it absolutely blew her mind that like that they're that they're all connected and that just the moon works that way. Um, so I agree. I think you know whenever I was a kid, I had a much better understanding of how the moon worked, <laughs> mostly like the phases of the moon and when it was going to be rising. You know, in the middle of the day versus in the middle of the night, those sorts of things. <laughs> because I was like out under the moon all day and all night, all the time, and. Even our kid, less so. Mm -hmm. And my kid, even less so. <laughs> okay, I think he, I think he gets it. But I was thinking about it. I was like, I don't even know if I paid attention to it very much, other than I thought it was cool, and I knew I had to come home for dinner when it was dark. So right. that was like because I was just outside yeah. so much, and I still I feel like it was part of that that generation or whatever where it's like it was like we had before internet times. And then we had internet times and, like, TV and stuff. But it was, like, when we were really young. So we got some of that, and then it transitioned. Right. But, yeah, I agree. I think nature is where I see the most magic. Like, okay, I will stop talking about it one of these days. But the eclipse, mm. the, the solar eclipse or whatever, that was the first one I'd ever seen, ever been in a path of totality. That was, what, two years ago? A year yeah. ago? Two years ago. Two years ago. Two. That was – it was – insane it felt like it felt like nothing else made sense anymore it just felt like this like really special crystalline moment in time or whatnot mm -hmm. where like it was nighttime when it was supposed to be day and all the insects came out and like you could just kind of feel it yeah just kind of flowing up through you i don't right. know right nature it was intense nature so we call it witchy vibes but i think mm -hmm. everyone else has always just called it life like it's like, right. it, it, like it kind of transitions to like it's like magic and then it's like science mm -hmm. and then it's like mainstream and then it kind of forgets but like there is that <laughs> uh, beginning of it yeah all. for sure I like that the the magic and then the science yeah, I, think I, right. I like that transition because I feel like that so many things we have scientific explanations for nowadays were originally thought of as magic Right, that and actually... So, and kind of are in their own way, even though we have a scientific explanation for it. It's like, but why is our world shaped like that? So there is a quote. Uh, Clark. Clark who? Who is this Clark? Oh, yeah, Arthur C. Clark said, mm -hmm. any sufficiently analyzed magic is indistinguishable from science. Right? So just this okay. idea that, like, once you really... Or, they're the same, right? Magic is just the word that we use for things that science has not described yet, for sure. So, but like the moon. <laughs> <laughs> the moon has been described. That has been highly described. And yet we still very much so, or at least our daughter very much so thinks that it's magic, mm -hmm. for sure. There's its own little bit of magic there too, anyhow. Um, right, and so the thing, same thing, I think the same thing sort of um, applies to crystals very much, um, where, you know, we give them these sort of like magical, or we we definitely capitalize in some sense, it's like very <laughs> magical qualities of stones, but they're also rocks. Like you can, and if you've ever 
it's funny if you ever go out and actually do your own mining or picking up your own rocks it will both like ground you in the fact that it's just a rock but i also think it even more elevates the magic of them as well the fact that you can find these beautiful stones um just in the middle of the dirt or whatever it may be both like grounds them and elevates them so oh witchy vibes also pluto season so pluto season mm -hmm. and we'll be doing a sort of pluto scorpio crystal party next week pluto and scorpio both um are very much so resonant with like deep magical themes so we're actually even literally entering into a season that is very much so filled with dark magical depths <laughs> if we can Right. Duh. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just Halloween. I'm just kidding. I for didn't sure. Think, I didn't think about. I didn't think about the Pluto connection. I should have. But yeah, for sure. Well, and so, and that's even a thing that I always consider as well whenever I'm thinking about the wheel of the year and how I. I have a background in geography and like historical geography and historical cultural geography. Like it's, this, this is how my brain is wired to think basically. You know, I often think about how holidays ended up finding themselves in the time of year where they are. And it, I don't think it's by, you know, coincidence or accident. I mean, what is coincidence? Um, but I do think that like, People who were living very closely with nature, you know, hundreds of years ago, were much more in tune with those like finer energies. So that obviously Halloween is going to be in the middle of Scorpio season, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so that I always find that very fascinating as well. It just it capitalizes on those those witchy vibes. Right. Mm -hmm. All of our crystal shows are going to earn parties going up. Will even be better. Like we, it makes for a really good lineup choice <laughs> as you're like going through and picking it out because there were several that we had to decide between this week and next week that. Yeah. I'm excited mm -hmm. to share. These are definitely the two most exciting crystal parties this week and next week. Um, and even our, even our daughter, what was she talking about? Um, Pluto, in particular, she is a huge fan of... What are the books called? The... Oh, Rick Nini! Rick series? Yes, the, yeah. the which ones? Rick Riordan. Oh, yes, all the Rick Riordan books. So, um, I guess it's... I, Magnus Chase is the one I keep thinking about, but that's literally the one she has not read. Yes, the Percy Jackson books and, yeah. and those. And so it's a very fictional sort of story around um, Greek and Roman gods because she's read multiple series of them. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that she brought to us while we were talking about, she was like, well, you know, Pluto is God of the underworld and therefore rocks. Or stones. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like all of them, right? Yeah. Right? And so this idea that, um, that we really are entering a season that is so wonderfully aligned with crystals and gemstones and rocks and the you know, talking of like you know how these energies come from the center of the earth not quite the center not even close mm -hmm. uh, but all of these things it just it has us super excited basically about uh, about diving into it which is actually even one of the reasons why we brought out this buddy we've literally been holding on to this he's been over there on another table we've been waiting for scorpio season mm -hmm. so that we can bring out this huge massive gorgeous obsidian sphere to sit on the middle of our table for these crystal parties i want it <laughs> it's so pretty it is it's gorgeous so this is the only one we have it is for sale on our website so if you're seeing it and you're feeling called um it will make a gorgeous addition yeah it, it just all, draws you in it draws it, it draws everybody in it really does it does it's a very strong pull every time someone walks in the door they're like oh, what is that Mm -hmm. oh it's great so great so we're here for it we are here for this season a hundred percent now that we are sort of officially in fall in scorpio season any sort of fun plans for either of you and anyone who's joining us live we're here at most people's very favorite i i imagine if you're here right now this is your favorite time of year <laughs> <laughs> I think that is uh, that is probably a fair assessment. 
So I'd love to hear from everyone if you have any sort of fun plans um, for this extra exciting season. Mm, well, we are going camping this weekend, mm. we decided. So we're going camping. Nice. Um, because the weather's perfect for it right now. Yeah. It's going to get, you know, cold at night, but it won't ever be too hot, which is nice. We got a, a fire pit for the first time, which I'm really excited about. So I'm really excited to, like, have some fires. Mm-hmm. Fires just always make me feel very, like, very connected. And um, I don't know. There is something kind of – it's like having candles burning all the mm-hmm. time or something. There is kind of that witchy vibe around the fire. But, like, family witchy vibe. <laughs> Right, <laughs> definitely burn some shit in that mm-hmm. fire. Yeah, definitely. I highly recommend. <laughs> I'm definitely yeah. doing some like burning. Yeah, for, That's sure. for sure. So camping yeah. sounds nice. That sounds really dreamy, actually. Mm-hmm. That's gonna be good. Yeah, or a nightmare. <laughs> That's what I'm... That's, that's also very Halloween themed. It could I'm, be a nightmare. That's what I'm worried about. We we looked at it and we should have plenty of space and room and like we should not have to be near anybody else. But I'm just like, I haven't been since this whole year this whole thing started yeah. so fingers crossed do it it'll be great it'll be great david fires they don't want the fires <laughs> I'm burning some things you um, can't steal my answer yeah that's a good one Dad. i think burning some of that wax is mm-hmm. always fun mm-hmm. um oh should we explain what you mean by that when you say that just now just right. burning wax yeah, we should probably. So we end up with a lot of extra wax from making all the candles here, and also just burning them at our house. And one of the best things you can do to a fire after it's already going is pour a little wax on there, because then it really intensifies the fire. Mm-hmm. It'll get a little bigger. It's kind of dangerous, so you want to be careful. I was gonna say, wait, are we insured to tell people to do this? <laughs> Right, do a little bit slowly, and it is really good for for yeah. getting like once you get a fire going, it's really good for like really getting it to tick. I was yeah. thinking about those um, fire little starters. fire starters you made yeah. last time with the with the scraps of paper we had that mm-hmm. from shipping or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Those are some of David's favorite creations. Like he will walk out of his shed with these things with the look of most sincere pride on his face. He created these beautiful fire starters that are going to give us an amazing fire. It's like, there's like some like basic human <laughs> nature situation happening whenever, <laughs> whenever he's making a fire, for sure. <laughs> I like it. Indeed. Um, so, that's, so fires. Yeah. You know, what's really great about this fire talk is that Pluto <laughs> is, Pluto. right? Is the planet of burning that shit down. Right. <laughs> more like, more correctly, transformation through fire. Mm-hmm. Just going to say. Just gonna, okay, so we do have a couple answers here. So uh, first, Linda says, and that is what I cannot buy, that gorgeous sphere. <laughs> <laughs> you sure right? about that? Yeah. You sure? It is great. It is great. And delivery. <laughs> For sure. Um, right? She also says David and fire equals magic. We have all seen it. It's mm-hmm. like there is a boy like joy <laughs> that erupts from, from this man whenever he is playing with fire. Okay, Celia says uh, yard work and family time at Apple Hill, just north oh. of Sacramento. That uh, sounds great. That sounds so cute. <laughs> pictures of this place apple hill. right apple hill is really cute david and i did a little bit of yard work so in terms of like this is the season of doing things in your yard right spring you plant fall you harvest winter you're just waiting summer you're yeah. just waiting um so we spent some time this past weekend taking down some plants that are done and rearranging some plants as well because even though we are entering into winter there are a lot of plants that still do really well in the season one for us is parsley parsley is one where it always does really great in the winter we have one plant that's going to be amazing this winter super excited we planted a couple other ones as well huh. just so you know i didn't know mm-hmm. i yeah i dug up my i dug up my summer garden last weekend i dug it all out because everything was pretty much done yeah. i was tired of it it was done it was yeah. time to go for sure but like randomly with the cold snap mm-hmm. this is what's so sad is randomly finally 
my peppers had started growing. I'd had a really hard summer with my peppers. They didn't want to do anything. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's like it got cold, which is the opposite of what they're supposed to want. And they started growing. That's funny. But I still went ahead and took them out because I just I didn't want to deal with it. Right. I totally get it. We did, we did similar. We finally had a tomato plant that was finally starting to turn red, some tomatoes. But they were like all split and weird. And we were just like, eh. Mm. It can just go. We're done. So there is some like yard work. So th- this is a season of yard work. Mm-hmm. for sure okay we have a couple new people have joined hi welcome we're going to be getting started with the crystal party 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 <laughs> in about 10 minutes we'll be going dark in about five to set up for the crystal party we're just here talking about what we're doing in this season um as fall is getting started and scorpio season is upon us i know i'm very excited and if we can like talk tea for a moment autumn Ooh. tea Autumn tea. Yes. We're sipping on our autumn tea, which is my favorite this time of year, obviously. <laughs> it is yeah. the autumn tea. But the thing about the autumn tea that I love, whenever we had our teas formulated with a um, an herbalist friend of mine, she was really great about going into those like, uh, what did she call it? Like the energetic properties of the seasons. And so whenever she created this, and it's our autumn tea, but we, it's officially called Soften. You can drink these teas any time of year, obviously. Um, but this tea was really formulated to like help bring the energy down. Um, I feel like this time of year, like in modern times, we're like ramping up for the holidays. I mean, we're mm-hmm. here ramping up for the holidays. But there is this like energetic dialing down that has to start happening. And for me, even like sitting here sipping this now, Mm -hmm. I'm feeling it. I'm chilling. Yeah. I'm chilled. (laughs) I'm like, do I do this? Right? You still want to do this crystal party? (laughs) Yes, we still want to do this crystal party. But we'll be doing it a little turned down. Yeah. A little back up. Just a little gentler. Mm -hmm. That's all. We're still here. We're still present. (laughs) We're just like... Hey, man, come look at some crystals. <laughs> you want to see my rocks? Um, for sure. Um, I will say, too, so, I know. <laughs> this week uh, this week on our journal, I did post a really fun post where I shared with you um, the herbed vodka that I actually made with our softened tea. Um, I made it a couple of weeks ago just as like a let me try this and see if it actually works scenario. Uh, and I brought it here to a crystal party where we mixed it with some just, was it tonic? Tonic. Some tonic. And it was delightful. <laughs> so I turned it into an official blog post. You can go to almanacsupplyco.com. I don't remember what slash comes after that. If you scroll down on the home page, you'll see it there. There's yeah. um, a picture of a cocktail um, where I let you know how to make the vodka, the herbed vodka, super easy. So easy. And then um, just a vodka tonic, which mm-hmm. the thing that I love about the infusing of the vodka is that it really takes, um, it takes like a basic, a basic cocktail, like a vodka tonic and like, mm-hmm turns it up a bit it was so good that was the best crystal party ever too i don't want to say (laughs) right just wait till we get in winter we're gonna be having hot tea toddies every friday that's probably gonna happen okay i take it back those will be the best ones (laughs) these are the best ones because of vibes those will be the best ones because of of whiskey vibes. Yes, whiskey vibes. For sure. For sure. Witchy whiskey vibes. We're always here for some fun. Perfect. Well, we're getting about the time where we need to guzzle the rest of our tea, mm-hmm. right? Set up for the crystal party and get going. I'm very excited about this one. Again, we have so many fun things on the table today. And really with the idea that we we want you guys to embrace what is now witchy vibes. <laughs> but is really just what life looks like when you take your face out of a screen and pay attention to what is happening in the world around you. Um, but we're also bringing things, obviously, from all over the world. Because if I had Lemurians in my backyard, right. my I life would be leave. different. <laughs> I would never leave. <laughs> yeah. Right. So we're going to bring some extra nature into your life. Perfect. With that, we're going to go dark for about five minutes while we set up for the crystal party. So excited to have everyone here. Happy Friday again. We're going to keep going. It's going to be a blast. Um, See you back here at 3 p.m. sharp. Cheers.
Do you remember any? Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Welcome to this crystal party. David. <laughs> David is the worst, man. Good to see everybody. I'm so glad you guys are here for this crystal party this week. We have uh, kind of an extra big table today because I... Again, witchy vibes. I was so excited about it. I wanted to bring everything to this party. Um, we also just have so many different little things to bring in. We also have some new things this week that I am insanely excited to show you. Um, some new things that we got from a recent crystal shopping trip that um, we have not yet been able to share with you. So let's get this party started. Um, I'm Emily. I am going to be conducting this crystal party today. We have Mary over here over my shoulder. She's going to be the person in chat assisting you as we go through all of this fun stuff. And <laughs> there's David. <laughs> <laughs> always David. Uh, David will be our runner today. So we will be all working together to conduct this crystal party, which is a virtual shopping experience where you get to pick out just the crystal that you want. Um, as I've mentioned a couple times already, today's theme is witchy vibes. We wanted to give you guys a really fun table um, so that if you are doing any Halloween decorating or are you really wanting to make the most of this full moon Halloween, um, you would have some good witchy tools or decorations or whatever you, whatever you'd like, um, for yourself for then. So, um, I'm really excited to get going. If you are joining us here on YouTube, if you're on youtube.com, youtube.com, hanging out with us, you are where you need to be. If you are not on YouTube, if you are on our website or are you watching this from some other avenue, feel free to, or if you'd like to participate, you're going to want to click through to the YouTube page because we use YouTube chat function to facilitate this crystal party. Um, we have several fun things on our table, and I'll be sharing that with you in just a moment. But before we get started with all of that good stuff, I want to explain how it is that this works. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up this URL almanacsupplycode.com slash crystal dash party. You're going to need that because if you want to claim things, that's how you are going to make them yours. So as I go through, I'm going to be showing you crystal after crystal on my nice camera here. And I'm going to have each one of them numbered one through, I think we have about 40 items here today. Usually we do about 30, but I think we have like 40, 42 today. Um, so each crystal will have its own number as I go through. Whenever you find something that you would like, say sold and that number. So you'll say sold one or sold 27 and you'll type that in the live chat, not the comment section down below, but the live chat section that's to the right of the video. Whenever you let us know, or the first person for each item that says sold and the number, I will set that crystal aside for you in a little pile with your name on it so that you will have access to your crystal and then you will be responsible for adding that crystal to your cart. As we go through, Mary will be putting links to individual crystal listings um, into the chat box, but you can also access all listings via almanacsupplyco.com slash crystal dash party. So you'll say sold number, we'll put it away, and then you will add that crystal to your cart. At the end of the crystal party, you will check out, and then on Monday morning, we will uh, ship out your little bundle of crystals to you. You also have the opportunity to, to add other things to your cart if there is anything else um, on our website that you would like to purchase as well. If you would like to be reminded of these rules at any point during um, during this live, you can find those rules at almanacsupplygo.com slash crystal dash party. You can also just hit Mary up in the chat and she is happy to help you out with whatever it is that you need. Uh, if anyone does have any questions, please let me know. Also know that there is about a five to 10 second delay between me actually talking and you hearing me talk. So if you claim a crystal and it takes me a few minutes to sort of realize, I gotcha. Um, and whenever you do claim a crystal, I do put it up 
on the screen right here. So you'll see that it did come through. Um, so just be aware, there's a little bit of a delay if it gets, if you're afraid I didn't see you, it may just take me about 10 seconds to see you. Perfect. And with that, who is ready for this Witchy Vibes Crystal Party? Me. Me. David, your hands. Okay, David's hand was not up. <laughs> Perfect. In that case, let me show you what's on the table today. Some fun things on the table. And we actually have two tables. I'm only going to show you one table. No, I think, no I'm going to show you both. You deserve to see both. So here is what we have on the table. I went after both aesthetically some of our more witchy items. You'll see like there's a common, there's, this is a gorgeous table. <laughs> I'll just tell you that I really love it. Um, so we have this really great table with some witchy vibes, both like aesthetically, but also energetically. I brought in both of those, um, both of those things in curating this table for you today. We're going to start out with some amethyst. We have some um, some sort of inexpensive pieces here. We have a really interesting scepter piece that's been hanging out around here and is looking for a good home. This is an odd piece, but it's amazing. Um, going through, we have some really nice rosettes. Uh, we have some insanely gorgeous, um, what are these called? Lasers, mm -hmm. I guess you can call them. Ooh, they're even making a sound. I don't know if you guys can hear these. These are magnificent. So some amethyst lasers. Um, we have an amethyst, um, a chevron amethyst sphere. Look at that, buddy. A couple of pieces of, uh, of Elmwood fluorite, um, some labradorite, which is everyone's favorite flashy stone. And by everyone, I really just mean me. <laughs> it's my favorite flashy stone. We also back here have a, a chalcedony tray. I pulled out several trays um, because if you're looking for something to bring just some like subtle vibes, some subtle crystal vibes to your house, these are gorgeous. These also make really great altars like little tiny altar pieces that you can use for, for whatever it is that you'd like. Some clear quartz because every witch needs a basic clear quartz. Um, some Lemurians because these are freaking magical. Um, some Merlinite, which is named Merlinite because of Merlin, <laughs> right? These have amazing vibes. We love Merlinite around here. Some obsidian, some smaller obsidian spheres in the event that our massive sphere is not for you today um an obsidian scrying mirror or also sort of tray or altar piece and then um some black tourmaline because if you are dealing with energy you better protect yourself i'm also i'm going to put my hand over this camera so that i can move this without making you drunk while i take you over to our sort of secondary table today which is here so we have a couple other pieces here next to David's feet. Um, we are bringing out these trays. This will be the first time you have seen these gorgeous trays. And so this is a sort of uh, quartz agate tray. These are amazing. I have two of these in my house. I love them very much. They are great for your coffee table, your bedside table, your bathroom. Put a couple of things on here and they really just set a really good mood. And they're thick, guys. These are about an inch thick. They are really hefty. Um, also bringing in some abalone shells. Another one of those like witchy vibe tools that everyone needs. We have four on the table here. We have um, a mortar and pestle, which you need. And then a selenite tray, which is going to be really great for if you want to charge your crystals, uh, selenite does not need to be charged. It will actually charge things for you. So if you're into charging your crystals, a selenite tray is really great for that. It's also just like a great sort of decorative piece um, or a great sort of mini altar, whatever, whatever you want. These are gorgeous and they're also pretty thick as well. So um, that is our two tables for the day. Oop. Thank you, David. Let me get this set back up, and then we will get this party started. Does any, if anyone has any questions, feel free to let me know. Oh, look at that! That's funny. I don't even know how that happened. Hold on, let me change this over. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> Right? Who knows? 
There we go. Now that's working again. Perfect. All right, let's get started. If, any, if anyone does have any questions, feel free to let us know. Otherwise, I'm going to get going on crystal number one. Ooh, let me see if... All right, hold on. My DS, what? <sighs> Things are not working the way they should. Oh, you know why? Because I didn't plug it up. Let me plug up my camera real quick. What are we even doing here today? Okay. Right? Yeah. I was telling, I don't know if you guys were here last week, but I like, I started the live wrong, and so there was like that whole thing. And today I was so proud of myself. I was like, guys, I pressed all the buttons this time, I promise. What I didn't do was plug up my camera. So let me see if I can't fix this little screen for us really quick. Oh, there we go. And we're ready. You'll also see we have a white background today because we are playing with some beautiful dark crystals and I want to be able to see them on that white background. With that, we'll officially get started. Are we ready for this? I'm ready for this. Okay, starting out with some amethyst, guys, with some nice little pieces here. This is number one. It's a beautiful piece, little amethyst cluster. Number one is 12 bucks. So number one is $12. I love these little amethyst pieces. I think they like add a great little bit of sparkle literally anywhere and everywhere. Have them all over the house. Okay, that's a little bit of a darker one. I also have a lighter one here. So here's number two. It's very light amethyst. Nice little chunk here. Very pretty. And just to give you a comparison of color and size and all of those things. So here's number one. Here's number two. Right? So pretty. Number two is also $12. Very pretty pieces. So number two. And hi, Erin. I always like seeing, seeing boss friends in here. All right. Number three is that interesting piece. So let me remove the sticker because I want you to be able to see all of it. Here we go with number three. And this is known, like it's an, an celestial. So you see how all these like little points and peaks are kind of all over this one. This also is a scepter. So what you'll see here is that it has this stone that has grown inside of it. There we go. You see this sort of inner stone and then it has actually grown lots of these little amethyst points sort of all over the outside. So it's a very unique interesting piece of amethyst. We have some sort of points here all over in here. This is it's so weird and beautiful. So this is number three. It has 27. I also think this might be a little on the smokier side of amethyst. I also see some, um, oh my goodness, what's it called? It's not ghosting. Some phantoms. <laughs> Ooh, we're getting real spooky. Some phantoms in here as well. Ooh, and in there. This is, this is a truly unique, gorgeous, weird piece of amethyst. So this is number three, and it's 27. In case anyone's feeling something weird. Okay, we're going to be going up in price points in Amethyst. Mm, up and down. We'll be going up and down. Here is number four. This is known as a rosette. So Amethyst, or this kind of Amethyst, grows like in, on, onto stalactites or stalagmites. And this is the tip of it. So you can imagine this being like a larger stalag mite in this case. And so they cut off the tip of it. So it has this like cute little rounded shape. 
and it's a little dusty and um, it is this beautiful grape jelly color this is very unique very rare not something that you're gonna see a lot of it's a totally different quality than those initial chunks that I sent you or that I showed you and look how sparkly I love this so this is 91 number four is $91 and this really goes into, you start thinking about like legit collector pieces. So this isn't just like your desktop collection, though you can put this on your desktop. This is like, you're going to get into some like interesting stones. This is number four and it is $91. Okay, number five, I think is a Witchy Vibes must have for sure. And I chose a really unique one from our little collection here. So this is number five. And this is, a, as you can see, a candle holder. So this is an Amethyst Drew's candle holder. You'll see here there is some, like, extra sparkly Drew's-ness happening over here. And sort of all over. And these, when they are lit, are so beautiful. So beautiful. So this is number five, and it is 47. These will give you the most legit witch vibes. For sure. Number five is 47. All right, now we're going to get into some, like, legit collector pieces. We're really jumping all over the price ranges tonight. Um, because it, it just, I could not. <laughs> this is another rosette. This is another grape jelly amethyst rosette. Um, sincerely beautiful piece. Super dark, incredibly sparkly. This one is 185. So this is number six, and it is 185. In case anyone is thinking about getting really going for a collector piece today. So you can see this is another one of those sort of rounded rosette pieces. The top of a stalagmite or bottom of a stalactite. Super beautiful. Number six is 185. Alright, next up. I want to share with you. I don't think I, I don't even know if I can hold these in front of my ca camera. Let's see. These are the amethyst lasers. And yeah, they grow like this. <laughs> so you can imagine, like I always think of these, they look like huge tooths. I'm actually going to turn this around here because I do want to share both of these with you. Here. You have this guy. Look how long this is. <laughs> It's so long and pretty. And um, the clarity of this one is gorgeous. Like you can see, you can see straight through this. Um, Tasha, are you here? <laughs> I'm just wondering. Tasha calls this her spirit of destiny, which I love. Um, but these are so beautiful. Another one of those collector pieces, hardcore witch vibes for sure. Um, this one is number seven and it is 150. 150 for this guy. Yes, I think the other one is the phantom one because I looked at that too. Did you? Oh. Maybe. I do know. I do know that the other one has some. Erica says this thing about Tasha. Her spear of destiny. Right. So 150 for number seven have another one here number eight not quite as long this one is 135 for number eight this one does have very obvious phantoms and I wonder if I can sort of see how there's a bit of a darkness going here 
You can see the fan, the layers of crystal growth in this one. It's very beautiful. And this one is really, this one is a smoky amethyst. So it has a bit of extra sort of darkness and depth to it that is seriously beautiful. So this is number eight. And it is 135. I love these. Put that on your coffee table and just invite people in. <laughs> All right. Love it. Okay. I take you back to the other camera. And then for anyone who would prefer wearing their crystals, I totally feel you. We do have, um, actually, we have one. <laughs> one amethyst Augusta bracelet left. And these are so pretty. Um, I really like these paired with the black tourmaline, I think is especially gorgeous. So if anyone would like an amethyst Augusta bracelet, this one is the last one left. Am I correct on that, guys? Am I lying? I think it's the only one over there. <laughs> Amethyst Augusta bracelet. Um, Erica says she's hiding from us. She probably is. What is she even doing? Okay, perfect. She's hanging out with all the crystals. She is, right? She doesn't need friends anymore. She has crystals. For sure. Okay, next up is another one of those pieces that we have not even shown you yet. Or I guess actually this is the first one that we really haven't shown you yet. We have not brought these out as of yet. This is an, a chevron amethyst. So you'll see here, it's like beautiful layers that happen. So what, how this is actually formed is you'll see here that like that was an amethyst that formed, right? On top of this amethyst, formed a layer of clear quartz. And then on top of that clear quartz forms another layer of amethyst. So you get these very beautiful, you can see it actually happening on a very, on a much smaller level right in here. So that's like amethyst, clear quartz, amethyst, through clear quartz, like over and over again. And so you get this incredibly beautiful stone. And because it is amethyst and clear quartz, there's actually a magnification of the properties of amethyst due to the clear quartz. So these are insanely gorgeous. We only have, I think we only have a couple of these and I brought out my favorite one. So this one is number, ooh, what number are we at? Number nine and it is 111. And I often say that everyone needs a crystal ball. <laughs> everyone. We have several balls on the table today because everyone needs a crystal ball and this one is gorgeous. Witchy right witchy vibes all day. So that is number nine and it is 111. Ugh, I do love this one. I think I might need to spend some time with one of these. Okay that is the end of the amethyst on our table. It's fun, guys. Sometimes I can bring out amethyst and you guys will snatch up every single one. <laughs> and sometimes I'll bring out amethyst and everyone's like, ah, seen that. Next, though, I only brought two of these out today. We only have a couple of them left. But I figured if I was going to be doing witchy vibes, I had to bring out what I think is some of the most magical crystals that we have, bar none. And that is some Elmwood fluorites. So here you'll see the most gorgeous little fluorite cube. There's also one over here. I don't know if you can really see that one. Let me see if there's any. Else. And then what is this bottom? Can you guys? Sphere Spherolite. Okay, so in the, it's on a matrix of spherolite. So this is an Elmwood fluorite. Elmwoods come not far from where we are um, in Elmwood, Tennessee. And a mine that doesn't deal in Elmwood fluoride. So sometimes they just kind of sneak out and we were able to snag some. Um, and they are the most beautiful pieces of fluoride. They're like world renowned for, or for producing some incredibly beautiful pieces of fluoride. Um, we had these at a party several, maybe like two or three months ago now. And someone was like dark fairy energy and absolutely yes. Because if you live in the Appalachians, you know that there's some fairies around here. 
period. So this is a piece of Elmwood fluorite. This is number 10 and it is $88. 88. I also realize I'm just covering up the table with my arm. Sorry. So number 10 is 88. And then I have one more here. Oh, this one's really good too. This is number 11. Number 11 is another piece of gorgeous purple fluorite. Purple Elmwood fluorite. Oh, I love it. Sarah McElvain says, I bought one. It's one of my favorite crystals. I love that. These are glorious. We have a, we snagged a couple for ourselves for our personal collection and they're sitting on David's bedside table because he also just loves them. Look how sparkly that is. This is an extra special piece. They all are extra special, but this is number 11 and it is 88. Amazing, incredibly rare specimens. Let me get you all collecting like legit rocks before you know it, before you know it. Okay. That's the end of the purple stones. So we've gone through the amethyst. And if you guys are like, if anyone's keeping a list of things that you may want to go back and, um, and see, I am happy at the end to do any comparisons or go back or whatever it may be, but that is the end of the purple stuff. We are now moving into this mid range, which as you can see is going to be some labradorite. So I have two palm stones here. Labradorite is associated with magic. Oh, look, Dave is in the chat. <laughs> Great. Great, David. <laughs> so glad to see it. All right, so here is number 12. This glorious palm stone. Look at that. It has some light blue sparkles. So gorgeous. This is number 12, and it is 22. 22 for number 12. I've shared here a couple of times that Labradorite was the first stone that I experienced like some insane crystal magic and has since remained my favorite stone. So this is number 12 and it is 22. The second one on the table, <laughs> David, you guys need to give David something to do. He's just going to take over the chat. No one's going to like it. <laughs> All right, here is number 13. Ooh, look at that one. Oh, guys, I'm sorry, not sorry for how overwhelmed I get whenever I'm looking at Labradorites. Here is number 13. It is also 22. Not as sparkly on the back, but the front sparkles all day. Look at that. These are so gorgeous. Right? People once thought that these were uh, left here by aliens. It's another one of the legends. Aliens. I mean, I could see it. <laughs> I could see it. That's number 13, and it is 22. Also, if you want to wear, we have Labradorite bracelets, um, or Labradorite Augusta bracelets. So we do have these if you're in the mood for wearing some Labradorite. And now I have a couple of standing slabs. Guys, I'll tell you, I had a tray here, and someone within our mitts got a sneak of it and decided to snatch it off the table before we could even have our party. <laughs> we had one last Labradorite tray and I got snatched. So I replaced it with a couple more slabs um, in case anyone is wanting to bring any of this energy to their bookshelves. Look at this one. This one has the most beautiful gold color. There is a hint of pink in here. We've talked before about how um, pink and purple in particular um, is pretty rare, but 
does occur and is gorgeous. So this one actually has some pink in it in here that I think is so pretty. Otherwise, it's very sort of orange, yellow, gold color, very sunsetty. I do love this one a ton. Um, this one is number 14 and it is $60. Ooh, look at that pink. I'm always tempted to keep the pink and purple ones for myself, guys. So you guys are lucky that I'm, that I'm even showing you this one. <laughs> I love these Labradorites. They're gorgeous. Number 14. Um, <laughs> you guys are funny. Erica, oh, it's gone. I wonder who took it. Wonder who took it. All right, so we have number 15 here. This one is also breathtaking. Look at that. What in the world? I love that it has sort of two colorways. It has this like very gold um, sort of sunsetty color here and then very much so blue green. Still kind of sunsetty but like different kind of sunsetty here. So pretty. So this is one of those rough ones. I always love what Labradorite looks like. Um, rough, right? I feel like we always see it so polished up and I think it's also so mesmerizing when it is rough. So this is number 15 and it is 75 for this gorgeous piece, 75. And I have one bigger one and I'm not going to be able to hold this in front of my camera. So I'm just gonna flip this here and you get to see my face and I'm showing it to you, right? Um, this one is number 16. Let me see if I can get it to flash. Come on. Come on, buddy. Oh, there we go. Oh, all the lights. Is it not going to flash for you? It's working on it. Oh, oh that. I think it's only going to flash in the glare. You can see, especially up in here. Oh, look how blue. Will you close that? Um... Yeah, Dave's going to close the window for us or close the curtain, whatever it's called. It's any day Friday. My mouth is not working anymore. Let's see if that works. Oh, no, do the other one. It's definitely the other one. <laughs> Thank you, David. Perfect. Okay, let's see. Okay, there we go. See that flashing? This one has such a beautiful blue color. It flashes here. This does flash sort of separately, this this half of it. Um, very beautiful. It is, I just looked at it and didn't even read it, 100. So 100, ooh, right? So this is really what my face does. Literally every time I'm looking at Labradorite. Sorry, not sorry. 100 for number 16. It's a pretty piece. I should always test these. I need to like practice before I get it. <laughs> so I know exactly what angle is really going to get it right. See, when I turn it around this way, it just flashes beautifully all over. I'm just, it's going to play shy with you guys. Anyway, number 16. Um, next up, I think I might keep the camera this way. Next up, we have a tray. These trays are amazing this one is number 17 number 17 it's a chalcedony tray so it's a light blue i might have to let me let me see if it'll show up better on this camera no i actually really love for you to open those windows back please. thank you david because it made my light go real wonky okay this is great so um it's chalcedony trays it's a beautiful light blue it's even not quite even showing up the right blue here. These thin little trays that come with rubber bumpers on them. And these are really beautiful to put on your coffee table or your, um, again, like your um, bathroom counter or whatever. You know, sit your moisturizer on here and a cute little candle or whatever it may be. These adorable little trays that allow you to bring a bit of nature into your home or they also work for really great little altars. Right, so if you really want to get into the witchy vibes and want to have like a candle burning to your ancestors, 
um, and or whatever set up your tarot card here whatever it may be these are really great beautiful little pieces for that um, also you can use these for like burning sage or whatever so if you don't want to use a um, abalone shell you can do that here as well so this is a chalcedony tray this is number 17 and it is 75 dollars 75 and there you can't really see it i wonder if i can get up in there see the sparkling happening in here there's like a little bit of a divot here and inside is some some very sparkly drews which gives this one a bit of extra character which i love totally love so that's number 17. all right now we're getting into some clear quartz we have just a couple pieces of little polished points that I think are super cute and everybody needs one. I also just kind of, similar to those amethyst clusters, I like to just sort of sprinkle these around the house, little sparkly things everywhere. Um, I love them. This one is 27. It is number 18. So number 18 is $27. It's cute little clear quartz polished point. And I have three of these on the table. This one's a little bit shorter, but I think has more clarity in case that's what you're going for. This is number seven, or excuse me, number 19. And it is also 27. Ooh, I love these. Whenever we're decorating things around Almanac here too, I always just sort of sprinkle these everywhere. I think of them as like, they're just twinkles. I'm just adding like little twinkly, sparkly things everywhere. We have several sitting around our house. Here's a bit of a taller one. This is number 20. And it is also 27. So taller, a bit skinnier. Some interesting things happening in there. Super beautiful. Number 20. Is 27 okay now we're getting into I brought two Lemurians to the table in case anyone's wanting to throw down some dough on some gorgeous Lemurians also I wanted to bring these out because holidays are coming think about yourself <laughs> you don't need to think about really anybody else just yourself so I wanted to bring in just a couple of these here yeah, David says you need to put your own oxygen mask on first, right? And in this case, oxygen equals Lemurian. So this is number 21. This is a beautiful, you can see the clarity here. Totally gorgeous, totally gorgeous. Um, this one is 207 for this guy. One of the things that make this makes this one so interesting is there's a lot of especially crystal healer folks who are all about sort of the number of facets here like different uh different geometric makeups of these crystals imbue it with certain powers this one is a channeler so in crystal healing world this crystal would allow you to do some channeling in a way that other crystals would not. Incredibly beautiful. Just think of it now. Just think of just, just pulling that out of your stocking on Christmas morning, right? And just being so surprised <laughs> and excited. Because you had no idea that you got that for yourself. Another little feature of this one that I do want to point out is this one has self-healed. Do you see? Oh, there you go. See all those little facets on the base of it there? So what happened is this crystal actually broke off maybe hundreds of thousands of years ago, right? And then once it broke off, it stayed in its like growing medium, whatever that was, and it began to heal itself. So it began to form new points on the bottom of this crystal. So also energetically in the world of crystal healing, this crystal also brings the powers of self-healing to its user. 
So some extra good juju there with this crystal. So this is number 21 and it is 207. All right, the next one is no joke. This one is next level. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to hold it here. Let's see. Actually, no, I'm gonna turn around. Turn it around to show you this guy. Want some witchy vibes, guys? Just carry this in your pocket. <laughs> Whip this out of your bra, right? You have the best crystal in town. This is a, another Lemurian, a clear Lemurian. It's a double. Got two guys here. And this big fella is a Dow. So... We mentioned a minute ago channelers and how they allow you to sort of channel messages from yonder, <laughs> wherever yonder wants to be for you, right? Um, there's also a type of like faceted situation that is a transmitter. So in transmitters, you would actually be able to sort of tell your crystal something, hand it off to someone else and it'll relay the message whatever it may be. This large one is both of those. So it's known as a Tao. So it is both a channeler and a transmitter. And this is a big old Lemurian one, right? Uh, and it's got a sister here. Um, so this one, and it is self-healing. So you'll see here, let's see if I can see. This one has also broken off and started regrowing itself. Like, this is such a beautiful specimen. I love it. Love it, love it. This one is 1192. This is like for very legit um, growers. I don't even know. You grow in some Lemurians, uh, collectors, um, especially if you're in the crystal healer realm, you'll see even more sort of value to having such a powerful stone. Because this guy is just like great. Really, really great. So this one is number 22. And it is 11.92. So if you guys know any like crazy crystal collectors who are looking for some truly unique Lemurians, send them our way. Or just tell your husband. <laughs> you know what I want? You know what I want for Christmas this year? A rock. Very beautiful rock. This is number 22. <laughs> and with that, we will move on along. Are you guys mesmerized by this one? I am always mesmerized by this one. I haven't brought this into the table yet because I know it's very extra. But I need today, if we were going to do witchy vibes, I needed to show you the most extra crystal we have. Okay, next up we're going to move into Merlinites. Merlinites are one of my favorite stones. Last week I was actually wearing a, a ring that was Merlinite. I actually got it in New Orleans at a Bing Boss vacation, just so you bosses know. It's one of my favorite stones. It's super, super beautiful, and I think truly magical. The second time I ever got a Merlinite, it was like an interesting shaped, like palm-sized thing. It wasn't quite a palm stone. It didn't have like the symmetry of a palm stone. Um, I think some experience with the experiences with that Merlinite is one of the things that really pushed me over into believing in crystals, I think. All right, so this is number 23. It's beautiful Merlinite palm stone. It is $18. $18. Merlinite is also known as dendritic agate, so it's a kind of agate. And it's dendritic agate because of these, like, interesting little black formations in it. It's a truly beautiful stone. I think really quite magical. So that's number 23. And here comes number 24, another palm stone. These are the only two palm stones we have on the table of Merlinite. Oh, this one has a, another sticker on it. This one is also 18. These are nice sized palm stones. Definitely on the bigger side. So pretty. 
Merlinite was also one of those stones that I looked for and looked for and looked for for so long. And then finally one day it started coming on the market and I was so excited to be able to snag some. And now it just sort of comes in and out. Sometimes I can find it and sometimes a little less so. All right, we also have some wearables when it comes to Merlinite. What is the name of this? I don't even know. I named these things, guys, and then I don't remember. Okay, so this is, this is our Frankly, a Frankie bracelet. I don't even know how to talk either. It has some beautiful faceted uh, black onyx beads and then a single Merlinite bead here. Great to stack with those Augustas or by itself. So Frankie bracelet features onyx and Merlinite. All right, now I'm gonna move into some very special standing free forms. We have number 25 here. These are Merlinite. I've also seen these called sea flower agate. And one of the, I, this one's just gorgeous. I love how it has like this very like obviously chalcedony agate situation here. And it is much more quartzy and gorgeous up in here. Um, it has so much character, so incredibly beautiful. This is number 25 and it is $66. 66 dollars. All right, moving to number 26. Also gorgeous, look at this. This is a beautiful agate formation. I, I could just sit and stare at this one for hours, for sure. Look at this, so pretty. So this one is number 26 and it is also $66. Oh, love it. Mary's dropping some wisdom down there. So associated with dryads, woodland, and tree spirits of Greek mythology. Attract magic and mystical experiences. AKA, witchy vibes. <laughs> Hashtag. <laughs> Hashtag witchy vibes. Okay, perfect. Remove. Ooh, this one's... <laughs> Sorry, it sparkled at me and I got... I was surprised. Okay. So we're going to move into some obsidian pieces. Um, I brought, got, brought out obsidian um, for witchy vibes because it's just such a good soaker upper of energies that I think if you are working in the energetic realms, like if witchy vibes is a little less of an aesthetic and more of a lifestyle for you, um, I think obsidian is a must, is a must. Uh, and I'm just polishing this one off a little bit because these spheres can get a little smudgy. So this is a about two and a half inch, two inch, two and a half inch obsidian sphere. And this one, let me see if I can get it to flash for you. Ooh, yeah, you see that? Do you see that? <laughs> Look how gorgeous. This is a silver sheen obsidian sphere. Some of our spheres have silver sheens. Um, some do not. This is one that has a very big one, as you can see. And what this is, is like obsidian is, you know, volcanic glass. It's um, lava that has cooled and turned into glass. Um, and there, as it's layered on, sometimes impurities will get between the layers and you end up with something as freaking gorgeous as this. So this is number, uh, checking my numbers, 27. Number 27, and it is, it doesn't have a price. Hold on. 60. $60. And as I mentioned earlier, I think everyone should have a crystal ball. I think you are very extra and fabulous if your crystal ball is an obsidian sphere. So this is number 27. Ooh, 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 look at that. And it is $60. Okay, next up we're gonna go up in size. Mm, hold on, get the smudges off of it. This one also, I think this is a rainbow obsidian, guys. No. Yep. What? Yep, yep. 
Okay. Have another look. Just obsidian sphere just hanging out here like this. Um, this one, let me see if I can get if I can show you. Oh, you see kind of, you can kind of see it here. Right in there, there's a bit of a little circle you can see here. It's green. And so this would be a rainbow obsidian sphere. Can't really see you on this ice. <laughs> The more I touch it, the more smudgy I get. It gets. So this is number 28, and this one is 135. Like you can't get more witch vibe than that, except for maybe the giant one that we have over there on the table. Mm -hmm. So rainbow obsidian sphere. Number 28 is 135. And then I do want to bring out these buddies. I was very excited to snag these. I don't think I've brought these out at all either. So this will be your first time seeing. Sorry, this obsidian really does just smudge up. Here is number 29. And this can be used for a couple of different things. Um, a scrying mirror is technically how they are how they are sold to us. Um, if you have noticed, maybe not, over on the table for our tea time, we've been using these as the base for a candle. So we've just been setting a candle on top of it. So you can use it as that little sort of tray or even like tiny altar space. Some extra obsidian vibes. This is number 29 and it is 100. So 100 for this really great obsidian tray. Number 29. And this is not all of our obsidian, but this is all that I'm bringing out today. Next week, we're going to be doing a crystal party for Scorpio and Pluto because we're in Scorpio season. Welcome. And um, we're going to be bringing out more pieces of obsidian next week. So if you're seeing these and you're thinking about it but want to see a bit more, definitely put next week's party on your list because um, we have several types of obsidian that we're going to be bringing to that party. I'm going to be taking you now through some black tourmaline. I think black tourmaline is another one of those witchy vibe musts, both aesthetic but also energetically. So I'm going to start out with these cute little guys. We have these adorable little like like little standing points. This is the natural termination of um, of black tourmaline. <laughs> like getting some brain farts, guys. Um, this one is number thirty, and he's only ten dollars. Only ten dollars for this cute little guy. So he just stands just like this, and I love him. So ten dollars for number thirty. Okay, number 31. Number 31 is not a standing one, but it is a gorgeous, look at the geometry of this. So this is like a growth of black tourmaline. And it's been chopped off both sides, but it's a great little pocket stone or like, I have several little dishes, also $10, several little dishes around my house with just various crystals in them. This is another one of, <laughs> this would fit great amongst those. This is number 31, and it is $10. $10. And $10. All right, next up we have number 32, a larger chunk and different. This one is not as smooth as the other one. This one actually has more pronounced striations. They just come from two different places, so they form slightly differently. Broken off on each side. This one is $22. So this one makes a nice like palm stone alternative. So if you're not really too crazy about the super smooth ones, you want something that's a little more naturally shaped. We have this guy, number 32 is $22. All right, next up. Ooh, I'm excited about this one. Okay, next up is number 33. This one is exciting because it is double terminated. And that 
is always mind blowing. So this like just just formed like this, basically. There was something probably growing here, or this may have even been where it was attached to something. Um, but it has terminations on both sides. Also has a bit of mica here and on this end, and it's 28. Also, nice palm stone alternative, right? Number 20 or number 33. Look at that. Is 28. Okay, now we're going to go into a couple more wearables here. So we have two. We have the Molly bracelet, which is rainbow moonstone with a chunk of black tourmaline. And then we have the Augusta bracelet in black tourmaline with a clear quartz little Drew's bead there. And together, that's quite nice. So the Molly bracelet and the Augusta bracelet. Okay, next up, I did bring one black tourmaline, um, one black tourmaline palm stone. I've mentioned before, I have a black tourmaline palm stone. That's my best friend. We're, we get along real great. This is similar. Great size, like good chunky size. Has a nice weight to it. So this one is number 34, and it is $32. Number 34 is 32. I love these black tourmaline palm stones. And then the last thing on the main table is something I was so excited to see. I did bring these out last week as like a sneak peek because someone was asking for some grounding stones. Um, but a black tourmaline sphere. And I'll say I was excited about these because black tourmaline is one of my favorite stones. So it probably goes labradorite first and then black tourmaline. No, it's probably labradorite and then tourmaline quartz <laughs> and then black tourmaline. Um, and I've always wanted to find um, a black tourmaline sphere. And so all of my years of searching and all things, can't find them. You can, palm stones, sure, chunks, absolutely. Spheres, not so much until our last rock buying trip. And we were able to snag only a couple of these. This is one of them. Um, this is number 30, ooh, do we know what number this is? Hold on, go look. Number 35, and it is, sorry guys, it is $75. So 75, and again guys, everyone needs a crystal ball. It doesn't need to be a clear quartz. It could be a black tourmaline. I love these. Love these. Okay. And that is the end of the main table. David, will you assist me in table number two? Yes. Okay, so number 36. We're going to get into these trays. Guys, these trays are everything. <laughs> I love these trays so much. So this is number 36. This is a slice of basically what is a large geode. So incredibly large geodes that were sliced up into trays. Um, this side has been very polished. This side a little less so. We've added some rubber bumpers here so that it makes Nick so that it makes a really beautiful coffee table tray or put it in the middle of your dinner table and put, you know, a vase of flowers on it. I have a couple of these in my house and they just like add a very special extra something to anywhere that you put them for sure. So this one is number 36. I'm also seeing some rainbows down in here. You have like some clear quartz situations going on and then like some chalcedony druzing or Cal Sydney agate situation going on. It's number 36 and is 111. 111. Who oh, David says these are a great amplifier. All right, number 37 is slightly smaller, but stunning, right? Look at this. And we only have a couple of these. And our trays always go so fast. Like the Labradorite trays have been sold out twice very quickly. Um, these ones, this is the first time we're showing them. 
Um, this one is just solid quartz gorgeousness. Um, this one is number 37. It's also 111. Also 111. They're so pretty, everybody. So pretty. Okay, now we're going to get into some not stones. And this is some abalone shells. Um, because I thought it might be fun to let you pick your own of these as well. Um, I have four of these that I've pulled out. Various sizing and depths. Um, what kind of abalones are these guys? The, yeah. Are the species or where they're from? They're Australian. These are from Australia, but they are... What is the... The David oh, David's working on it. Okay, so here is number, what number is this? 38. Um, and the abalone shells are 20. Look at how pretty these green are. Lip. Green lip. That's green. Oh, got it. Green lip abalone. So these are a little different than we've had before. Uh, before they're usually much more like regular mother of, of pearl. These have a beautiful, more white appearance, but obviously very rainbowy. So this one is number 38. And it looks a little yellow on the camera. It's not that yellow. It's definitely like a very pearly white. Just so you know. So number 38 is 20. We have like natural backs. Number 38. And then we have number 39. This one is especially deep. <laughs> It's also very beautiful. So pretty. And again, it's coming off a little yellow, but it is very much so a pearly white. So it is number 39. Also 20. Rough back. So pretty. David says that you can hear the ocean in this one. <laughs> this is number 40. <laughs> Can you really, David? I'm not going to put it up to my ear. I feel like you're playing a joke on me. Here's number 40. Also, $20 is totally the air conditioning. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. David's got tricks. Rough back. Super beautiful. Super beautiful. And then here is number 41. Oh, this one's... You can sell this one's a little more white even than the other ones. And I think a little bigger. So here's number 41. And it is also 20. Oh, oh my God, guys. Mary has... <laughs> Mary's listening to it. <laughs> Mary can hear the ocean. So these still have the ocean. <laughs> Oh my god. You guys are so funny. Um, I will also say we have created a new ritual bundle using these abalone shells. Um, we only have 10, 11 ritual bundle. I know. Are they called ritual bundles? What are they called, Mary? Those. Oh, smudge bundles. Smudge bundles. Yes. What is included in the smudge bundle? So. The smudge bundle has a turkey feather. Turkey feather. A sage stick. Sage stick. Your, an abalone shell. Abalone and shell. And a votive candle. Votive candle. So if you want to do any um, cleansing rituals in your home, we have these kits. Have everything that you need. So an element of each of the four elements. So you have fire in the candle, um, air in the smoke and feather. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Um, water in the abalone shell and earth in the sage. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you. Friday is not working anymore. So we do have some um, smudging kits in stock as well with those abalone shells. Okay. Number 42. I want to show you guys these mortar pestles. So these are yellow jade, no, excuse me, yellow onyx mortar pestles. We can also sit, tell that there's like some red going on. Each one of these looks different. So this one in particular, number 42, 
looks like this. These are perfect size. I'm always very meticulous about getting this size because anything too small or smaller than this, you can't do anything, anything too big. It's going to be too heavy to like get out and use because these things are hefty, are hefty. Um, and then also a yellow onyx, yellow and red onyx um, pestle. And these are 48. Um, these are from Pakistan, are they not? I'm not mistaken. So super beautiful. I love these a ton. I'm just going to hold it. I can hear the ocean in this one. <laughs> no, not at all. So we also have that. That is number 42 and it's $48 if anyone is interested in that. And the last thing I'm going to show you, and then we can go back and see other things as needed, is number 43. I have to show you. Look at these um, selenite discs or trays. Um, so these are glorious. You should be watch. You should watch how you use these. Selenite cannot get wet, so don't put these in anywhere where, like, bathroom where it could get wet or putting flowers on it where it could get wet. Um, these are going to be something that you want to definitely make sure you keep dry. You can also see the thickness of these. These are hefty little buggers, um, and selenite is, will charge things, not your phone, <laughs> let me be very clear, doesn't do any of that, but if you are someone who wants to charge your crystals, um, but don't want to put them outside or can never remember or whatever, you can put your crystals on selenite, and selenite um, is a natural sort of charger, so a selenite charging tray, uh, or just a really cool like sitting on your coffee table tray with you know, your tarot deck right here and maybe a little candle right here. Um, these are, how much are these, David? You remember? 28. These are 28. So, of all the trays, these are the least expensive. Um, also, you can't put anything wet on these, so beware, but are gorgeous. We also don't have any pads on these because, are we going to put pads on these? Is that a thing? We might put pads on these. But selenite trays. I love these. I sold these and got so giddy. David had to carry a very big, heavy box of them a very long way, and he griped about it for quite a while afterwards. So, <laughs> yep, yep. The selenite tray is number 43, Amanda. Number 43. Oh, Laurie got. <laughs> We have some more of these, so if we need to snag any, so Laurie, gotcha. Laurie got this one. Gotcha, gotcha. Those are great, and we do have more of those in stock, so if we need to pull out a couple more, we are more than happy to do so. And with that, we have reached the end of our table, so if there's anything, you can totally just add one to your card, Amanda. I love that. If, um, if anyone would like to go back and see any other things or would like to go back and claim some things now, you are more than welcome to. Um, otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and bring up this one. And then we also will stay open for virtual shopping in the event that anyone wants to snag any other things that we have not shown you today. So let us know in the comments if there's any of the stones that we've previously shown that you would like to see again, there's anything that you would like to claim now that you've seen all the things, um, or if there is, um, what was number 10? Gotcha. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two. Ooh, girl. Oh, that's number nine. Oh, number 10. Number 10 was an Elmwood fluorite. Here you go. So number 10 is this really cute little Elmwood fluorite. You'll see this great cube here. There's also a little cubie buddy growing right there. You see him kind of purple um, on Sphairlite. So this is from the Elmwood mine in Tennessee. Super gorgeous, incredibly magical. If I may say so myself, it's number 10 and is 88. Look at how cute that is. It's so pretty. What, David? I know. David's saying that a lot of them have phantoms. This one, I think this one does. I think this one does have some phantoms. You really got to look in there. Okay, perfect. And then first tourmaline chunk. Oh, perfect. First tourmaline chunk was number 30. Look at this, buddy. This cute little buddy here. 
So a little standing point, and this is a natural termination, and it's $10. So number 30 is $10. Perfect. Oh, is that sold 30, Laurie? Just to make sure. And then Caroline, I will show number 12. If you would like to purchase number 12, just say sold number 12. But until then, I'm gonna assume you just wanna see it. And here is number 12. Ooh, I love this. <laughs> I always say this with Labradorites, guys. So here is number 12 is 20 so sold 12 for Caroline got you and Laurie if you will just confirm that sold 30 we will set that one aside for you gotcha Caroline that's a good one when I was pulling those out that one has like hardcore mermaid vibes oh perfect Laurie got you sold 30 there you go perfect all right let me know if there is anything else Anything else we need to go back and see, I'm happy to do that. While I'm waiting for those to come through, I'm going to go ahead and let you know. If you have claimed something, be sure to, yep, gotcha, Lari. Be sure to put it in your cart and check out. Um, Lari wants to see the palm stone. So this one is number 34, black tourmaline palm stone. Super beautiful. Oh, I just lost my camera. It's fine. We got it. Got it. Okay. So good size. You'll see here. Oh, 34 sold. Gotcha, Laurie. Perfect. Carolyn wants to see 36. Yep, and then 36 is over there, David. Perfect. Oh, um, how much was that palm stone, David, in your hand? It was 32. 32, Laurie, for number 34. Okay, and then number 36 for Caroline is this beautiful buddy. So this is a um, agate geode tray, big old slice. And, uh, oh, perfect, sorry, <laughs> I'm reading multiple comments and confused. So this is number 36 and is 111. So very like quartzy in here, kind of see-through, and then a beautiful sort of solid agate situation up in there. I like it. Perfect. All right. Let me know if there's anything else. cameras are going wonky. This Mercury retrograde thing is getting me, starting to get me. Perfect. All right. And if you are feeling done, feel free to go ahead and start checking out. Um, if you're not feeling done, feel free to let me know if there's anything else that you would like to see. Oh, 36 sold. Nice. Caroline, you are going to love it. Wherever you put it in your house, is going to be elevated to the next level. I cannot. So the story about these those trays is that um, David and I got one for ourselves. We actually got two for ourselves. Um, Several months ago, we were at uh, we were out rock shopping as we do, and we got these two as sort of like a like this is cool. What if we get one of these? Let's take it home, see what we do with it. And we fell so in love with them. Uh, they were like, okay, this is definitely something that we're going to be carrying. I think that, you know, our people are going to love it. You guys love trays. Um, so I, um, so last time we were rock shopping, it's funny. We like looked around for two days, basically. And one of the very last vendors was the vendor that sells these trays. And uh, it's just... <laughs> It was the best. We saw them. We were like, we want all of them. And by all of them, I mean all the ones of a similar size. Um, and we were able to snag probably only about six of them. So um, anyway, it was a long time coming and came from us having them in our own house and being blown away by how much they just sort of change a space. We have one of them. Um, what are we doing? One of them is on our coffee table where we have like a almanac candle obviously sometimes I'll put like a little um little thing of flowers on it um 
on our coffee table, and the other one is. That's right. Okay, so that's the one. I was thinking. So the second one, the second one has sort of lived in a couple of different places. Um, at first, I put it um, underneath our uh, like whiskey decanter with our glasses on it, and that was gorgeous as like a little bar space. Um, but we live in an old house and things jingle <laughs> when you walk through the dining room. So the glass on the stone was a little nerve wracking. So we ended up moving it and we put it instead in our entryway. We actually put our little catch all bowl um, that like we throw our keys and like the dog's poop bags, <laughs> those sort of things into this bowl. And then we put our sunglasses on it. And like for a space that used to just sort of be cluttered and ugly, like we just throw stuff in it, um, having it on this tray has given it some like, it just made it look nice enough that now we keep it nice. And so it's like extra nice now because it's like, in order, like our glasses, our sunglasses aren't just thrown everywhere, and it's on this beautiful tray. So it just, they, I love them, obviously. I think you're going to love it. Um, yeah, so Lari is wanting to see the other stone tray. It didn't look smaller, but would you say, like, uh, like maybe like, like half an inch, perhaps. Will you show me, hand me the other one, please? I also like the yeah, if you do want a smaller one, we have the Cal Sydney trays for sure. Okay, Caroline, see you there. I will, um, if you go, to, let's see. See you there, Caroline, one sec. Mary is going to send you a link and the instructions, you'll just add the link that Mary sends you, Caroline, in your, in your cart and, and you'll check out. Um, okay, Laurie wants something larger. Let me see. I'm doing a comparison here for you, come here. They actually are about the same. So you'll see, like, they're the same. Just kind of, like, differently shaped, honestly. Um, and then we also do have a couple other ones. So if you do want to see anything else or any of the other ones, Laurie, you're more than welcome to. But this is number 37. Just differently shaped a bit. Super pretty. Super, super pretty. Um, are there any other like super interesting ones over there? I mean, they're all interesting. Oh, David wants to show this one. That is, that's a nice one too. So here we'll call this number 44. So this one has sort of clear quartz around the edges and then um, a chalcedony center. It's funny because it even like sort of chalcedony and then like another like very much so a little more clear through or see-through quartz and then sort of that um, opaque chalcedony and then right there in the center I don't even know if you can see that there's like another sort of section of that clear quartz so just beautiful super beautiful so we'll call this one 44 also 111 in case that's floating your boat I love these. Love these. All right. Let me know if there's anything else that anyone would like to see. Perfect, Caroline. <laughs> it is super hard to pick. Can you, you, can I see them both? Yeah. I'll give you a comparison. I'll make it as easy as possible, as I possibly can. I got it. And they are pretty heavy. Okay, so this one is 44. This one is 37. 37. So 37 and 44. <laughs> right? It makes it easy. No right. David says if it makes it easy, there's no wrong choices. They are equally beautiful, but in different ways. I'm also totally getting a workout. So 37 and 44. No, 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 no. 37 <laughs> and 44. Perfect. Oh, shoulders are burning. Shoulders are burning. All right, perfect. I do love those trays so much. So much. Perfect. All right. Let me know if there's anything else, guys. Um, or, <laughs> can't just... I totally get it. You just think about it. Just think about it. 
Um, and if there is anything here that um, anyone decides they want to they want later we do keep the table up until monday morning um, so if you want to email us this weekend or if you want to check out um, and email us the number no guarantee that it will still be here after like once we shut this down um, by any means but sometimes people will decide on saturday night that they actually do want that thing and They'll check out and let us know the number in the comments and if it's still available or in the message at checkout, if it's still available, we will we will um, package it up for you. But again, no promises because <laughs> Hold on, Mary really wants to show you another one. Oh wait, oh Lori, she said thirty seven. Never mind. <laughs> That one is smaller. I do think that one is definitely on the smaller side. So I think you're making a fantastic choice. Fantastic choice there, Laurie, for sure. That one's my favorite of them too, just so you know. No, no, she does want to see it. She does want to see it. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> right? They're all so pretty. It is a bit smaller for sure, but definitely has a different look to it. So let me see. So we'll call this one 45 then. Let me see this one. So then this one was 37 and this one is 45. This one just has a darker look to it. Right? So 37 and 45. Let us know. Oh, I love these. Okay, perfect. Um, 37 is the one that she wants. Gotcha, gotcha. And it is lacy looking. These are beautiful, so beautiful. Perfect. With that, it is. It's a, so it's, it was a geode, so it was just like a round rock uh, with quartz inside of it. Um, the darker, or you didn't get the one that had sort of the more opaque. It's chalcedony, but chalcedony is a form of quartz. It's just like has smaller, doesn't have smaller molecules, but it's just tighter packed or something. Um, so they're all quartz, but that one is just very much so solid one kind of quartz. How about that? Perfect. Okay. In this case, let me know if there's anything else. We can also open up to open virtual shopping. Oh, Amanda wants to know if we'll be getting any more Labradorite trays. Don't even know. Every time we, um, we, we have a couple of people that we get them from, we're always like checking and seeing. Um, so yes, I just, I would say yes, we probably will get some more in. I have no idea when that will happen. Um, but stick around because I'll let you know. I know those Labradorite trays are super popular. Um, so maybe, I hope so. <laughs> I hope so because I love having them. I think they are gorgeous. Um, and then I do want to bring back out these chalcedony trays um, in case anyone is interested. These are probably the most similar in size and shape to the Labradorite trays that we get. So they're very thin. Uh, they're easy to sort of put around. And those other ones, like, they're hefty buggers. Um, but these are just sort of simple little trays. And again, the color, like the lighting in here is not doing these justice. It has like a very sort of pale blue color, pale blue, almost purple color. Super beautiful. Um, I do like these a ton. So if you want a consolation prize, <laughs> we do have these Chalcedony trays, um, but I am always staying on the look for those Labradorite trays in case, in case that you're just going to hold out for one of those. I totally get it. Um, so that is number 17 though, in case anyone is interested in that. Perfect. All right, are there any other things that you guys would like to see before we start doing an official wrap up? This has been a fun party. I, lo I loved putting this one together. Um, I mean, we have some fun pieces and now we get to really start bringing in some of our newer pieces that we have been processing and, and getting together for everyone. Be sure to keep an eye out on our website as we are listing new things every week. Um, and then next week we're doing a crystal party for Scorpio and Pluto. So Scorpio season started today. 
or yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so we'll be diving in deep into some of those energies. So if you're interested in sort of talking about Pluto and Scorpio and learning more about those things, you can come. We'll be talking about those sorts of things and also just sharing crystals that help dive into the energies of that season. Um, I'm very excited about it, even though it is scary Scorpio and Pluto. <laughs> I don't mind it. And we get to bring out some beautiful crystals next week that we have not shown yet, that are not on our website yet. I'm insanely excited about it. Um, so be sure, be sure to come next week. You're going to like it. We're going to have a couple of things we've had here, really obsidian being one of those big things. We have different kinds of obsidian we're going to bring out next week. Um, and like I said, just some other things that I'm not even going to like give you sneak peeks of yet. Anything else from you guys? All good? If there's nothing else that you guys are wanting to see, then be sure to start checking out. Um, if you do have, I don't think anyone here has any odd YouTube name, so I think we're good with check out there. Um, if you have any questions along the way or you do want to snag something and want to check and see if it's still around, you can go to or email us at hello at almanacsupplyco.com. We will keep the table up until mid-morning on Monday in the event that you decide that you do want to snag something. Um, also, oh, I didn't talk sage earlier. Sure, you guys have heard my sage spiel, but because we do have a couple new people here, I'm going to go ahead and let you know that um, you should buy some sage. <laughs> and I say that because we bought a huge batch of sage um, from a uh, family-owned farm in Southern California. It is hand-harvested. It is sustainably grown. All the responsible things for white sage, which can sometimes be a bit of a... Um, questionable product. We take all the questionableness out of it as much as possible. Um, so we bought a bunch of this at the beginning of the year because it's one of our biggest sellers at our at our uh, local farmer's market, which post-COVID we cannot do. Um, so we have a bunch of really great quality sage um, that does go bad. <laughs> it's not bad now. Still smells amazing, um, but it will in the future. So we're asking all of our friends who use sage to snag some sage, use it just because there's nothing less sustainable than making, than having it go bad. So if you are interested in some white sage, it is in our, um, our crystal party page for you to snag some if you would like. And you can also cleanse your crystals when you get them. Or just get ready for like some some Halloween smudging, right? All the good things, perfect. Well, if no one wants to see anything else, I'm gonna take that as a sign that we are done for the day. This has been a very fun crystal party. If anyone has any questions. Oh, perfect, Caroline, thank you so much. It's good, it's good, and we don't want our sage to go bad by any means. Definitely get it and use it. Um, it has been a pleasure to hang out with all of you today. If you have any questions, feel free to email Mary at hello at almanacsupplyco.com. It's been a blast. Please make a note to come hang out with us next week. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notifications there. And then also, um, or if you're on our email list, you can get notifications there as well. This has been a ton of fun and I'll see you guys soon. Happy Friday. Oh, agreed, Caroline. You got some good crystal babies coming. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>